Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 186. This episode is with our first ever four-time guest, my friend Derek Arnold. It's been over two years since his last visit on the show, and he's been up to some really cool stuff. We talk about him being a captain of the puppeteer team for Jurassic World Dominion, what it's like working through the pandemic, getting to work with practical dinosaurs, what it takes to puppeteer a Dilophosaurus and a Demetrodon, crazy stories on that one, big lessons he learned on set, the process of shooting a sequence from the puppet team's perspective, and so much more. You know him, you love him, I had a blast hanging out with him. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Please enjoy this episode of the Interesting Podcast, number 186, with return guest, Derek Arnold. Theme song time! Right. I always say that and people go, you, you know you're you're the dad, you don't babysit. <laughs> I was like, no, I babysit. Um, yeah. um, so it's like, the same regardless of who's doing it. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's I, I actually was just listening to the last time you were on because it's been oh, two yeah. it's been two years. I know. Isn't that weird? Wow. Yeah. It's also weird because like we're actually friends. Yeah. So we talk all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, right. Because so much of the show is like getting to know someone I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I almost get more nervous when I have like people I actually yeah. want. I'm like, oh, yeah, we always talk about everything. So yeah. what is there to what talk we, about? What are we going to talk about? <laughs> yeah. But the, the last one came out April of 2020. Wow. Right when the domino fell. Because lockdown was like March of 2020 when the pandemic really hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Isn't it was just after March, April. Yeah, and then we were in lockdown. Yeah, because we took we had just only started on Jurassic for like we were only on Jurassic. We were shooting for like two weeks, and we only had shot one sequence, and that was it. They locked us down. Really? How long were you in lockdown for? Three months. <sighs> yeah, <sighs> but the last month was then just all meetings over oh. Zoom. Yeah, and then it was like, and then we just hit the ground running when we came back. Like, literally, the, the national lockdown here ended, and then the next day, we were back at Pinewood prepping. <laughs> okay, we're going. <laughs> Gotta make up for lost time. Oh, my God, yeah. Dude, I watched it yesterday. It's good. It's fast-paced, isn't it? It's very it different. <laughs> There's a lot going on in there. It's, I, the- I, I really liked it. I did, too. I didn't mind it. Like, I, you know, I obviously, I look at it very differently um but i thought i thought out of all of the three Mm -hmm. jurassic world i thought it was pretty pretty good um in terms of story and pace um so yeah i mean i have my criticisms but like you know i wish you know i wish they would have like been a bit more specific when they used the puppets to when they did it but that's just that's sure. just my critical eye that's just yeah. me being <laughs> hypercritical going oh they should have used the that angle instead of this angle because sure. all i'm doing is looking at the puppet and not the scene whereas right. you know the editors and colin are looking at the whole scene not you know they're like well yeah the puppet's there but who cares about a die line <laughs> they're making a movie derek <laughs> yeah all the eyes were a little bit off there if they only just pushed it <laughs> Yeah. I mean, to be fair, as a puppet captain, you should be looking at it that way. So that's my job. <laughs> I get yeah. it. I get it. How was it different from because you worked on all three? No, no, just the two. Just, just Fallen two. Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, uh, Fallen Kingdom and yeah, Dominion. Because I remember you worked Fallen Kingdom. I didn't remember if you did the first one. Because Fallen Kingdom, you were on the puppet team, and I know Tom also did some like mocap stuff. Yeah, and Tom was on the puppet team as well, and then yeah, he yeah. went on. And weirdly, like not even associated with because Neil Scanlon ran Fallen Kingdom. Right. Um, that's how we got onto it. And so Tom, but Tom already had inroads with ILM. He was already working for them, doing a lot of motion capture stuff with them. So Smart independently, man. they were like, Oh, hey, we're did you want to come in and do some mocap stuff for for Fallen Kingdom? He was like, 
uh yeah i know all the sequences i was puppeteering they're like wait what yeah (laughs) yeah i was on set doing it they're like oh yeah definitely come in there perfect it was a weird sort of crazy two worlds mixing one but yeah so yeah we were on the puppet team there's a lot of us on the puppet team on fallen kingdom and then i was heading up the team on dominion were you nervous like yeah yeah Yeah, i kept because it was the like you know me and tom and robin have been coordinating a you know, a few movies in the last couple of years, you know, mm-hmm. with all of our the reference puppetry stuff that we do for Fantastic Beasts and Artemis Fowl and Tom and Jerry and um, mm-hmm. some other films that haven't come out yet. But um, this was the first one where it was like, OK, it's not just reference puppetry. There's maybe one po- like blue was reference. Sure. The Pyroraptor was reference, but the rest of them were practical. Really? E- yeah, 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 yeah. They were. Ooh. Yeah. Beta Mm -hmm. was supposed to be CG, and Beta is 95% CG. There's a few shots where she's practical, and that was because Dave Vickery, the head of uh, VFX, was like, "It's just too beautiful. I didn't want to. I didn't want to stomp on it." (laughs) She was like a big champion, man. He was the reason, like, that it was so successful. Is Dave Vickery? Um, Really? That's cool. Yeah, he was really, really on our side, and it was a really good marriage and relationship between myself and Damien and um, and Dave Vickery just on set talking and constantly figuring out how to do these shots the best that we can. Sure. Um, But yeah, scared? Yeah, pretty much. I just kept thinking, everyone's just going to think I'm faking this, (laughs) which I was. And, you know, (laughs) and then like... But, you know, we we called in some puppeteers that we worked with, like, you know, uh, um, Dave Chapman is a puppeteer mm-hmm. we called in. Dave Chapman is like... The guy. Yeah, you want to be a puppeteer in the UK, you, you chase after Dave Chapman. He's like... Right. He, he's the beyond end all. And, you know, he was doing some sequences and some puppet stuff, and we're watching on the monitor and we're rehearsing, and I was like, oh, Dave, what happens if you were to... um do this instead or could you try this and he's like yeah yeah cool cool and i'm walking away going oh oh my goodness i just gave dave chapman a note Uh, (laughs) but it was a good note i thought it was a good note it's a good note yeah and there were times like it was lovely because there were times where i said this to dave or maybe the other guys and i was like dave what about this and he's like uh yeah i could try that he's like but you know i was thinking this this and this and i was thinking i'm doing this because it affects that and i was like actually yeah that's that's fair yeah take don't don't do what i said and it's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a dialogue, but it was a show of respect where we could actually have a conversation between the two of us. Yeah. And he was respecting that I have an opinion and I was respecting that he had an opinion and we came to a conclusion. There's no sort of hierarchy or my word is written in stone and that's the be all and end all. It sure. was like, it was constant conversation and Damien was there as well. So me and Damien mm-hmm. were both captains and, you know, they gave us the term captain, I guess, just Love to it. sort of. Write it, um, write it. <laughs> because they need they need something to write on a paper um, yeah. <laughs> to justify the pay grade. Dude, right? <laughs> You're Captain Derek now. Just take he it. He was, yeah, he was one of the first phone calls I made. I, I left that meeting and I was like, oh, I need somebody. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he was, he was such a lifesaver on that job. Honestly, he was pretty much the heart and the soul of it. And I was just the guy that was just loud. I was just sure. the guy that was just loud on set. <laughs> That's how it works. Demo would just be over figuring things out. And I'm like, what do, what do we do next? How do we yeah, do yeah. this? <laughs> what am I yelling? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, who do I say this to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the siblings when they have to ask their mom to spend the night at someone's house. Like, you, you go, you go ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go ask. Yeah, I'll do the, I'll start doing the dishes. Yeah. And like five minutes later, you come in and say, hey, mom, like, like, let's butter her up first. <laughs> right. Yeah. You also have um, siblings, huh? Oh yeah. Middle child. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, really. We we manipulated that stuff. But, you have um, to. It's yeah. hard out in these streets. Yeah. You put put the groceries away before she gets in the yeah. kitchen and she'll just be like, Oh, that's amazing. And just then say I'll say something ask. nice to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh but yeah, no, scared every day. Scared every every single day. And then every day when we wrapped. Every day when I was walking back to the car, I was like, they're going to fire me tomorrow. They're going to fire me. They're going to come in and be like, oh my goodness, this is horrible. Or like not even fire me, but like be like, oh, let's never hire him again. Like we'll just have to put up with him or else we don't want to pay the severance package out. So. <laughs> right. He's so loud. Oh, every day I was scared. Every day I just was like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> right. But you did it. 
But it was the dream job. It, I mean, come <laughs> on. Especially with you, because you are the biggest Jurassic Park fan I know. I know. And for it to come full circle in this way, because Fallen Kingdom yeah. was already really cool. Uh, you know, I was so excited that you got I, it. I thought, that, I thought that was it. I thought that was the pinnacle. Yeah. And then they brought back the legacy characters. Yeah. I mean, dude. Well, we went in. So uh, I got a call. Mm-hmm. I, I just got the phone call from, from John Nolan's assistant, Juan. Um, and he was like, are you sort of available to come in next week? We're just working on a project and we need you to look at a puppet and sort of, you know, get your opinion on it. And I was like, yeah, cool. All right. Cause they wouldn't tell me anything. Why not? You know, puppets. Yeah. And I, I knew obviously it was at Pinewood. So I knew I was going to Pinewood and I knew maybe one or two of the people. So I was like figuring it out. I was like, I think this is for Jurassic. Yeah. And I walked in and I saw A.D. Parrish, who was the head of mechanics. He was the guy that's the HOD for all of the mech stuff, building all the mech spaces oh, cool. for the dinos. And I worked with A.D. on Star Wars. He built the mech for Boba Dan, the beaver face guy. Oh, yeah. It was like beautiful. One of the first guys I ever met. So, cool. uh, so I was like really comfy, comfy with A.D. And they brought me in and they, were, they had the Dilophosaurus, the test version of the Dilophosaurus built. Yeah. And Pete Hawkins had been building it. And I know Pete again from Star Legend. Wars and yeah. And from, from, from Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, man, we're doing this old school. Uh, and it was all cables. It was all cables with oh. a few animatronics on the face, man. But the idea originally was that the Dilophosaurus was going to be about four feet above us. Okay. So we were going to be underneath it, puppeteering it. And oh. they wanted to, then the set, the original set was going to be four foot up almost like what it was on dark crystal yeah because and they were going to carve a track through this forest because it was going to be the dilophosaurus stalking claire oh through the night and they wanted to do it that way so that they could film a fully practical dinosaur with no cg like just to see a walking dinosaur ambitious then he (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> massively ambitious yeah. we were like oh okay and then Why not? We, we went in on november mm-hmm. and the dilophosaurus was the last thing we shot the following november really <laughs> yeah yeah so we went in it was about three months on the dilophosaurus before we even started shooting so we went in november me and demo and we put like a rudimentary crew together like of three other puppeteers now in the end it took 10 10 or wow. 12 puppeteers to do yeah a lot and it all had to be pushed on a train like on a track it, it, oh. it and you just think okay let's just get the dilophosaurus walking you're like oh my goodness the logistics <laughs> yeah. Just anatomically how the dinosaur would walk because then it was like, you just start to go, oh, we didn't realize this. So it's like whoever was pushing the 10 puppeteers on this track had to be at the same pace that the guy who was walking the feet was, or else it would look like he would be, if he was pushing it too slow, it would look like the dinosaurs skating on ice. And if he was pushing it too fast, it would be look like he was moonwalking forwards. (laughs) It was so... So diff- we spent weeks doing that. Anytime there was a, a hole in rehearsals or shooting, we we were having rehearsals on Sundays and, you know, on long weekends on a Monday, we we're calling people in not on their days off going, we just need to rehearse this. And in the end, it didn't get used because... Because <laughs> movies, like, that's why. <laughs> they were like, we cannot build a whole set four foot up. It, get, it ended up got shot out in the back lot outside. So it was like, but we knew that. Sure. Because all you know, we did maybe about three months of that, and then they were like, "It's changed." And then, but it's the same premise. So instead of us being mm-hmm. under it, we were just all behind it. Oh. Um, but it still needed to be rehearsed that way. So it was just that was the longest dinosaur we spent rehearsing. The dinosaurs. Oh my goodness! Better part goodness. of a year of my life just on Gracious. that thing. How, yeah. What was the total from the first meeting asking you to come on to when the movie like wrapped? How much time do you spend? Uh, 13, 14 months. It's a long yeah. time. A long time. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I went in on the November to start on the Dilophosaurus and then quickly the Nasudo, the baby Nasudo that gets freed at the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. Loved um, it. That was the second thing that we worked on. Cool. Um, and the first thing that we ever shot 
on the film. That was the first practical dinosaur we brought to set. Really? Yeah. So cool. it was because it's early on. So we brought that to set. That was the first thing. So it was like telling John Nolan, because uh, I worked with John on Dark Crystal. So there's a connection. Gotcha. There. Okay. So we had a lot of Dark Crystal puppeteers come on to Jurassic World. Because I did they notice sort of that. Were, yeah, they were comfortable. They knew them. Mm -hmm. um, so they were like, you know, let's bring on some of the people that we know. It was like, yeah, all right. You're the boss. Whatever, yeah. whoever you want. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. Right. <laughs> I just want to keep my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, the name of the game. Yeah. The Nasuda was the first thing we brought to set practically. And I was saying to John, I was like, it has to be the best thing we do out of the movie because yeah. it's the first thing that the crew is going to see and we need to win them over. Good we point. Need to, like, we need them to be like, oh my goodness, these are real dinosaurs. Yeah. And if we do that with the Nasuda, we, we've won. Yeah. And we did. It was a really successful shoot. It was about uh, four nights, five nights, and a night shoot. In North London. The whole farm sequence? Yeah, it was about four or five That's nights. fast. Yeah. In, in like a work week, did the whole first like 10 minutes of the movie? That's awesome. Might have, yeah, it might have been. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. And then on the last night of shooting that, that's when the world went into uh, lockdown. <laughs> so we like, literally finished the Nasuda and the producers gathered and like the government, Pandemic. the government's closing down the world. And then we, yeah. we, we went on hiatus for three months. Yeah. <sighs> I was yeah. in Triceratops is is my favorite dinosaur, and the pseudo mm. is a is a a, a pseudo Triceratops. That yeah. sounds like there's a farm of them. But I'm in. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm totally dialed in right out the gate. But there was only one. Oh. Huh. So in order to shoot that sequence where they they go through, we yeah. it was one of the last nights we did it. We we took the one dinosaur and we we put it in the one pen and we puppeteered it. They went okay. Then we lifted it up and put it in the next what? pen, puppeteered it, and then and then Dave Vickery at ILM they did their magic and made it look like they were all slightly different but the same. And yeah, so it was just one puppet. Just that's amazing. Puppeteered five or six times down the row. Yeah. Dude, how heavy is it? That was heavy, man. I've so seen the heavy. video of you like supervising people putting it into the back of a van. <laughs> yeah. And then they had to push the Nasuto in the cage across the field. Claire yes. and um, I forget her name. Uh, oh, I forget her name. The other actress. Same. Yep. I know who you're talking um, about. Yeah. With cool hair. <laughs> yeah. They had to push the Nasuto across the field, but they wanted it puppeteered still. So we had to build oh. a sidecar. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So you had the cage. <laughs> And on the, the far side, that, that's not on the camera side, obviously. The other side of the camera was a sidecar. And I was laid down. Really? I was laying down next to the sidecar. <laughs> and I was wrenching this thing, trying to lift it up so that they could puppeteer the animatronics on it and just get the body moving as much as we could as it was rolling as they were pushing it down. So bless them. Those, yeah, those, those lovely, lovely, strong ladies were pushing this in the pseudo <laughs> that was massively heavy, the trolley. And me, yeah, <laughs> through a field. It was like, oh, it was heavy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I love now the idea that every time I see that shot, I'm gonna be like, Derek's in the shot. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I'm lying down beside the Nasuto on the other side of the camera, just puppeteering it as best I can. What? Even even when we saw it in the yeah, even they were looking through the cage where there's always somebody laying down next to it. Wow. Yeah. How many how many controls are there? What 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 goes into puppeteering the Nasuto? The Nasuto was five of us, four of us. There's what? every dino, every single dinosaur, every single dinosaur, practical dinosaur in the movie had a uh, mech face. Um, okay. Okay. He, uh, even the reference stuff, like the uh, Pyroraptor, oh. which was pure reference, mm -hmm. nothing practical was shot, but they built a practical um, Pyroraptor with animatronic face in it. John what? John Nolan was like, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. We're going to give them the best reference they get. <laughs> it was yeah. like a pretty good reference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Stan Winston started this and I'm going to finish it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the new pseudo it took about four or five of us to puppeteer. It's like eyes, you know, like nose, mouth. Um, you could puppeteer the body. Uh, and then there was a cable, cable that came out that uh, moved the whole head. And then oh. you could even have another person. We call them bladders. They're like um, little squishy balls. Oh, and cool. They're tubed. And then you can um, squish those and you can get like cheeks to blow out and stuff like that. You're just pumping air into it. Oh. Yeah. How many dinosaurs get destroyed in the course of a shoot? Because it's a physical thing. 
and you're doing physical things with it. Like, did they ever get scratched? Did they, how much how much upkeep and repair are done on these things? Constant. Yeah. Like, every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't want to break them because the, the price sure. of a small car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, sure. I was like, we're on set one time, and I had that the microceratus, the little baby microceratus. It's um, it's the one that you see uh the young girl playing with in the 1980 when she's watching her oh, yeah, mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that baby little dinosaur that they're called a microceratus. Love it. Um, and they're adorable. They were so cute to hold. I bet. I, I was just holding it on set, waiting for us to, and some of the crew are coming over and I'm like, I can't. And they're like, Oh, is it going to bite me? And I'm like, no. Uh, Cause <laughs> there's one of these in the world. That is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's taken like six months to build. Uh, it's cost tens of thousands of pounds. If you break it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the one that's gonna have to go tell Colin why we can't shoot on it. Right. Oh, I was like, yeah, I've dedicated <laughs> my life to this baby. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just don't want you to poke the eye and yeah. it for it to break because that's about a four hour refix. <laughs> so Ooh. it's like, it's like, yeah, it gets dangerous because if anything breaks, it's like you can see the mechies there going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's you like the collective clench. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Because they're like, how do you fix that? They're like, we're going to have to cut the skin. And then you're like, oh, oh don't cut the skin. Because then it's no. like, oh, gluing and painting is a mess. It's like, yeah. So, yeah, hopefully none of them break. And, and we were really lucky. Um, I don't think we ever stopped a take. I don't think anything ever broke during a take or after a take. I think, you know, when we came back to something, we, you, you relook at it and go, oh, actually, we can tighten that cable there, fix that cable there. But Sure. We're really lucky. I yeah. like to think that there's a behind the scenes picture of you just holding a baby dinosaur, like holding people <laughs> off. <laughs> it's like angry. Yeah. Like, don't touch this. Is I this rehearsed on just a stuck Sunday. Like that? I was in here on a Sunday rehearsing for this. Yeah. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> you know they say in acting you have to draw on things from your own person yeah. you're like i have a child so i'm gonna put this into this yeah exactly <laughs> that is wild where did you guys shoot all at pinewood everything like even the like um where did they go in the deserty place oh malta malta that's they the went one. they went to malta second okay. unit went to malta got it, we got were it, got supposed it. to go to malta ah classic uh, <laughs> but we didn't because when we came back from from lockdown, uh, mm-hmm. travel restrictions were very very hard. So they sent mm-hmm. uh, they sent you know the the big guys out there and the crew out there. But like there weren't really in the Malta scene. So we shot the underground yes black market that was at the 007 stage. That was oh cool! Everything else was shot at Malta. Got it. Um, okay, that makes sense. The, so, but there was no practical dinosaurs for the dinosaur chase. Sure, um, of course. The raptors, so they didn't need us out there. Um, okay. And I think they went to Canada as well in the beginning, but again, there was no practical dinosaurs out there, so they didn't need us in Canada. Right. Um, okay. So they all went, and we all. Sure. <laughs> you had um, work to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you brought up the underground sequence because I think the underground market might be my favorite scene. Might be because it was just so cool with so many dinosaurs and like so yeah. much going on. And that's exactly what would happen if dinosaurs were back. Yeah, it was, um, that was epic. That was always the biggest scene we were going to film. Oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, that was where all the puppets were. Yeah. Um, and of course, first thing we shot when we came back from COVID. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of, course, of course, we're going to start on this sequence. Right. Um, you remember how to do it. And yeah. Go. <laughs> And but the hard part was navigating a new world in which oh. protocols had to be adhered to. And oh, good point. Yeah, because like Jurassic was literally one of the first productions to start again, and they had spent three months prepping. Mm-hmm. So it was it was like it was bonkers, man. Going into Pinewood, you would have to go th- through. Uh, a sign in tent every morning and it was it would take your temperature it was an infrared temperature taking yeah so it'd start with infrared temperature taking you would have a pass you'd tap it onto the the 
the screen. It would tell you if you were you were greenlit or redlit. Like you know, crew oh. that worked in the workshops were had to go down a different aisle, and people that worked on set had to go down another aisle. Uh, wow. If you, yeah, if you were in the workshops, you weren't allowed to go to set. If you were on the set, you weren't allowed to go to the workshops because they didn't want people mixing and contaminating sure. or like you know giving people the people COVID. It was yeah. then the testing. It was like Ugh. you know you would get you know we were the guinea pigs. We were they were figuring out how to test people. And we're like we had like NHS nurses testing us. It was like yeah. the first ones of the kind where they stick the they put the stick through your nose and all the way to the back of your throat. Uh-huh. It was like why are we doing this? Uh, uh. <laughs> and then it was like masks like 24 seven. And it was like, then when you were on set, you weren't, they were so strict. They had these new things called COVID marshals. And we're like, what is this? And now if you look at any movie or any TV show, they have a COVID team. Yeah. And there are people that walk around on sets going, you know, make sure you guys are adhering to that and separating. Mm-hmm. We had to put in protocols of going, okay, so these this person has this remote control for this puppet. You're not allowed to touch it other than that person has their name on it. And if once they've done using it, then they have to wipe it down. And it was right. like, it was so many loops before we could even get work. to get to work. And I genuinely over COVID, I thought, mm, they're just going to, they're just going to do everything CG. They're sure. going to do everything CG. And he didn't. Colin was like, and, and Universal were like, nope. They they kept everything the same. And we, so it was like, wow. okay, how do we navigate 22 puppeteers? Yeah. On a set? Then it was like, okay, so now the puppeteers had to be at the far end. And now only the people that we needed to shoot, because usually you sort of hang around on set to see what's going on. And it was like, yeah. oh no, it was. So the COVID supervisor became my best friend because I was like, <laughs> okay. So sure. we have to fit four people in this box. How do we do that? And he's like, that is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's figure that out. And right. so it was like timing people for how long they were next to each other, making sure that the people that were next to each other had been COVID tested the the most recent. It was just, yeah. and you know, that was, it was new waters. Like nobody knew what to do or how to do it. So it was like, yeah. it had to be strict. You know, everybody, sure. if, if you went on set, the actors weren't wearing masks at this point, you know, nobody knew anything really about it. So it was like, okay, yeah. if the actors were on set and I was puppeteering, puppeteering near an actor, I had to wear a face mask and a face shield. And I could uh-huh. come in at the last second puppeteer and then I had to get out. Yeah. And it was like, you know, because that's just the way it is. And if that's, sure. that's how we have to do it, that's how we have to do it to protect them, to protect me. Right. You know, because you know, it doesn't, it's not just the one way, it was both ways. Um, right. And bless them, the actors were great about it as well. And they were very specific because, you know, if they had to touch the dinosaur, we were like, look, mm-hmm. you can touch it here and here. And then, you know, we all had to wear gloves if we were bringing the dinosaur onto set because at that point mm-hmm. we were like, oh, we don't know how it transfers onto foam. Oh, right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So honestly, like the Malta scene, the underground scene was like oh. a whole thing. That was three months of Zoom meetings going, how do we do this? And and me and Damo and um, Claire, Roy Harvey, who was the other. Oh, another legend. Yeah. Like the three of us sort of led that, l- led cool. the movie through. Yeah. It was, it, it was the three of us that were sort of on every puppet, on every scene, on everything. It was, um, so, but me and Damo were like constantly working out, navigating COVID schedules, making sure that mm-hmm. people were tested 24 hours before coming to set or rehearsal and having to get cleared. It was, um, yeah. And then we get to the fun part. Then we're like, okay, let's, let's, let's play, let's play some dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's free, Derek. Nothing's <laughs> free, man. <laughs> That's and it was wild. awesome. Yeah, it was a great. It was a great scene. There was so many beautiful little. Um, yeah, there's some. I'm I'm looking forward to when somebody, you know, when the movie's been out for a while and somebody takes that snippet and puts it onto YouTube because yeah, there were some beautiful, beautiful puppets um, that were being built that that mm-hmm. you know thankfully got their little heyday. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite, but they're all they were all like it was fun. I just felt yeah. really bad for set deck. I felt really bad for the guys that built the set because they built sure. a beautiful set. And we're the guys that come in and go, you need to drill holes in that, you need to take <laughs> that box off. Right. 
we're going to have to punch a hole through that. And they're just like, okay. You're like, right. <laughs> One thing that I didn't, I noticed that didn't make it on the film is um, our worms, our eels. Oh. Um, they built 13 of these four foot eels, white, like pit, like perfect pure white eels and they um they would suck onto the the glass of a they were in a water tank set the yeah. back and they had one that was permanently stuck there and it had like little bladders that they could pump through and it would just like look like it was sucking then cool. and then the guys worked you know the, the, the guys that puppeteered that uh the puppeteers that puppeteered that um they worked for like a week on fishing wire because they would they worked out oh. this whole fishing wire system because I was like, guys, we need to put all 13 eels in these tanks and make yeah. them move. So <laughs> you just need to figure that out. So you sure. guys go wild and figure it out. And they <laughs> built this intricate fishing wire system so they could all be hidden behind the tanks while we were filming. And they'd all be pulling on different fishing wires and it would what? make this eel go this way and this one go at the same time and this one swim up. I was like, well done, guys. That was pretty epic. And it didn't cool get seen. <laughs> like, oh, guys. Of I felt course. really bad for them. <laughs> but um, yeah, the uh, the Malta scene was, that was pretty crazy, man. Do you kind of know how Neil feels? You know, that I need my eight seconds? You, are you like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. I totally get it now. It's like, yeah. Because the guy's like, oh, this, this. And I was like, guys, let's just find a really good angle. Let's mm-hmm. find a really good shot. Let's rehearse a really good move because that's the one they'll use. We yeah. don't want to over complicate this in our heads. Like, sure. Let's just really get a good thing. And then it's my job to sit near the the first AD and the director and go, uh, it's better if we shoot it from this angle. There you go. Because, Fight for your team. Yeah. <laughs> now nah, they don't listen to me. Of course. You tried, oh, though. <laughs> oh, well, turn around and won't work. well, actually, no. You know what? I shouldn't say that. I, I've actually praised Colin for this, and I've never um, been with a director who's done this before, where, especially with the Dilophosaurus, mm-hmm. um, he was like, you build the dinosaur, you puppeteer it, and I'll shoot around it um and he was like that yeah he was like that for pretty much every puppet he was like you could tell like you could tell like as much of his heart and soul was in the movie he was also very practical about things if something wasn't working it wouldn't kill him he was like okay let's let's move on okay um and you're just like ah like there's no there was no anger there was no like he didn't walk away going, Oh, I've let him down. Cause he was like, he gets it. Like he right. gets working with the puppets. He's like, yeah, all right. Or, you know, I'd be like, Oh, these, these, these angles work best. And he's like, okay, cool. And it was like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I remember him one time saying to me, um, beta, we we're, we we're doing a shot on beta mm-hmm. and we were out somewhere in London, just outside of London in massive forest. And, uh, he went, where's Beta? And I was like, Beta's up there because that's the last shot we shot was up on the hill. He's like, yeah. how long? Now, usually when a director says how long, you say five minutes. Five yeah. minutes, man, don't <laughs> worry, five minutes. Instantly, whatever you need, right now. But I knew we were shooting outside and we were relying on the sun, the light. Mm. You can't lie about five minutes outside. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. in five minutes, the sun's going to be gone and you don't have a shot. Right. And I remember looking at it and I went, 25 minutes and he went 25 i went colin if i tell you 10 minutes that sun's going to be gone in 10 minutes because it's going to take 25 and you're going to kill the shot and you're going to waste your time and i just don't have the heart to do that to you right now i'll do it to you yeah. in the studio but not yeah. now <laughs> yeah. and i remember he and he and he stopped and looked back and he went uh no i appreciate that yeah thank you we won't do that we're going to save that shot for tomorrow and i went okay cool and i was like i remember going Oh, that's a good lesson. Like, yeah, <laughs> like you yeah. got you got to play that game quite. Like, that's a dangerous little game to play. Uh, yeah. But you got to know when to tell the truth, yeah. <laughs> and know when to like say, "Yeah, five minutes," and then get on the radio and just yell at your team, going, "We got five minutes." <laughs> right. What have I done? <laughs> but I remember just like walking away from that, going like, "Wow, he he just like in his head he went, no, that's cool." Yeah. Um. There's like a you respect know, for the honesty. Yeah, like, yeah. And and not that's not me praising me. That's me praising Colin and being yeah. like, that's good. That's great. I'm not going to be disappointed. We're going to move on and I'll do yeah. it tomorrow. And that just means tomorrow we had to be, the next day we had to be on it. Right. So that he didn't have to wait 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 
that was the big thing. It's like that's the that's the biggest part of my job is coordinating is knowing the times. Yeah. Because timing is everything on a movie set. And time is money. Puppets take time. Puppets <laughs> take time. Oh my goodness. And that's the <laughs> and when you got a movie about dinosaurs. Yeah. You get it. When they're when they're the movie and you're just like, how how do we not take time? Like yeah. not take time. Yeah, it's a hard one. Ooh. Do you have like a nemesis dinosaur now that just like gave you so many problems? You're like, if I never see this one again, it'll be too soon. No, they were all so beautiful. Okay, that's no. good. That's good. The Demetrodon? Yeah. Hands down, in the 10 years I've been working, easily the top three, one of the top three best puppets I've ever I've ever made, I've ever worked really? with. Really? Why? Ever. Yeah. I don't know. I just think yeah. it, was, it wasn't over-engineered. Um, oh, man. I'm so good at remembering who built things. Um, <laughs> Pete and Andy Calhoun. Andy Calhoun uh-huh. uh, yeah. led led the build and was assisted, obviously, by A.D. Parrish and fabricated by uh, Fiona Barnes and Jesse Hinton. And the Demetra Don was supposed to be something, and it became, they just had to build it. And so it wasn't over-engineered. It was just like, oh. there it is. And the Demetra Don was, it was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, we need to get, like, we need those front legs of the Demetra Don to move. And I was like, yeah, we, you know. Sure. Like, could we put them on rods i was like yeah you could put them on rods and i think it was fee barnes or andy calhoun came up with the idea they're like what happens if we put somebody inside the dinosaur no and we stick their arms outside just (laughs) behind just behind their front legs and then they can puppeteer them like that and i was like that's a really good idea did you do that i didn't (laughs) know you made (laughs) someone else do it yeah you know who i made do it you know who I made do it? Tell me. You know him. There's no way. <laughs> Mr. Tom Wilson. You made Tom do it. <laughs> I said, Tom, you gotta climb through the butt of this dinosaur and lay in it and into the arms. And you know, Tom, he was like, All right, cool. Of course, I'm in. <laughs> Where's the so Tom? Yeah, so Tom would crawl in and what? lay on this. Yeah, lay essentially inside the cavity of this dinosaur and stick his arms out and they built it fiona barnes built the dinosaur around tom so they had him in early enough yeah and so it was on this plank system so really uh-huh. if you if you lift the dinosaur up there was uh-huh. i think um like it was like almost like um what are they called a uh, wheelbarrow effect. oh yeah yeah but there was no wheel on it so right. uh it would be lifted up and then it would be taken off the wheel so that when the guy uh big big muscular guy named Michael Taby that I know from Warhorse. Great. Um and I've worked with Taby on on a couple of other movies. When he lifted it up, he would push it. And oh. then Tom could move the legs. Michael Taby's a monster. Like the guy's he was the guy that pushed the 10 people on the Dilophosaurus. Oh. Like, yeah, like the guy the, it's it's a funny. tank. It, honestly, it's like you, you've never seen anything like it in your life. You're like, how are you? How are you alive? Like, how do you <laughs> do not you just eat? rush things when you pick things up? <laughs> yeah. um, so Tom, Tom would be laying inside the dinosaur on his feet. So his feet would literally stick out the butt end of the dinosaur. <laughs> Claire Roy Harvey, <laughs> yeah, Claire Roy Harvey was sat right at the end of his feet. And she would control, there was a rod that went through the spine of the dinosaur up into the head, and she would control the whole dinosaur's oh. head left, right, up and down, and would tur- uh, roll and everything like that. And behind her, I sat controlling the back legs. Oh. And then three guys, A.D. Parrish, Carl Gallivan, and Damo, Damien, were oh. off set uh, doing the animatronics for it. Dude. And it was beautiful. It just, it just moved so lovely because it was this big iguana, like a Huge. Komodo dragon thing. The yeah, it was like we, thing. Yeah, we thought of it as a Komodo dragon. I can see that. Um, and again, it was one of those things that was supposed to be CG, and they were supposed to just build a fin that went through the water. And John yeah. just slowly built a whole dinosaur. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, in the movie, you see what eight nine of them yeah there's a bunch of them there's one 
What? Again, so there was one. So it was, again, logistically, we we had to take like two weeks, me and Damo and Claire, logistically working out with the first AD and the set guys going, okay, you want the, you want the, the first shot was with Alan Grant climbs up the ladder, mm-hmm. turns around and sees the jump scare. Falls. That was the first spot, but the, that's okay. So that's in a cave. That's what, seven foot above the set? Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have to get that dinosaur and all the puppeteers and that rig up there. Then the safety protocols. Then we have to fill out all the safety protocols. And they're like, all right. And then the next one has to move over seven feet over there. <laughs> okay. And they're like, how long is that going to take? Hour and a half. <laughs> oh, they're like, my. why? And it's like, it's, you're not just picking up a hat. It's a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> and then moving it into set and then getting it inside the caves and all of that. And, oh man, it was like, about a week or two or something like that. It was just like constantly wow. figuring out logistically what's the best setup and what's going to save the most time. So that if we start on these setups and end the day on this, yeah, that means when they call cut and wrap for that day, then we have the whole after wrap evening and in the morning to get it over to where we need it to be. So it was logistically figuring that out in the cave scene. But Honest, yes. And the way uh, John Schwartzman, the DOP, lit it, because he lit it with like fire, like real fire, and it would just yeah. blend through. You could see the fin and all of the veins. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah it, was it was my, honestly, one of my favorite dinosaurs to ever puppeteer, or, or even just watch puppeteer, because I didn't really, it was just the back legs, just yeah. sticking <laughs> on the back legs. Yeah. Which, I mean, come on, <laughs> you've been there for a while. Well, I chose it. I mean, I got, I think, I think, I think when you sort of move up into that sort of bigger position of, you know, coordinating or captaining something uh-huh. uh, like me and Damo, we were like, no egos. If we don't have to touch a puppet, that's the best thing. Yeah. It's a lot easier if we're beside Colin and Dave Vickery and John Nolan talking to them and getting the information they need and relaying it because you know the director and those guys they they talk to actors all day so they just want to give the note and it happens it's like oh you got to give the note to 10 people (laughs) right yeah you want the dilophosaurus to stand up and look to the left that's 10 people yeah having to have a shorthand of figuring out how to do that in three seconds like anatomically what does the dinosaur have to do anatomically in order to achieve that and it's easy if one person was doing it. You just, but the more people you add to the equation, you know, getting the Demetra Don and one guy is just sitting inside the, the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you have, and you have external puppeteers that are on the other side of the set because of COVID. Yeah. So it's like, it's, there's a delay in the information. So you have to be able to relay the information. So it's constant. So I was like, yeah, like if I don't have to touch a puppet, that's amazing. <laughs> and, uh, and now I love that sequence even more knowing that Tom went full lizard. Full lizard. Yeah. So I don't think there's a puppet I actually hate yeah. or <laughs> to despise. Right. Um, because they're just all so beautiful in their own way, man. Yeah. My favorite shot of the whole movie is the uh, Claire under the water. Mine is too. I love that. That's one of the cool shots in any movie I've ever seen. Yeah. I loved it. I loved the, I loved that whole sequence. I love that whole sequence of her just slow. I was like, because the yeah. movie is so fast paced. It's so lovely just to sort of like, well, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like really interesting. And they're not showing the whole dinosaur. You just sort of see its feet. Yeah. Then you sort of see its hand. It reminds me of like, of the, the original Jurassic movie where like the kitchen scene. I was thinking the same thing with the raptors. Or just pans down and you just see the knob turning and yeah. you don't even need to see the dinosaur or the whole dinosaur when you come up and see his breath. It's like, oh, those little bits were so lovely. I really love that part too. Ivan Manzella is a concept designer mm-hmm. and he concept designed that dinosaur that, oh, I'm going to screw its name up, Therizinosaurus or whatever it is. The long fingers. Big long fingers, man. That are and super blind. sharp. He does. I remember, and I'm, I'm I'm working with Ivan on a project right now. And I walked in the next day. I was like, I love that sequence, yes. man. I was like, that dino is so rad. And he was like, Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. And he's designed a lot of gnarly, crazy things in, <laughs> yeah. in his career. Like he's, you're yeah. like you. What kind of medication are you on, man? Because right. you, your brain is. Right. It's beyond genius. It's so beautifully gene, gene, yeah. like morbidly genius. <laughs> right. You should probably avoid doctors for a while, just in case, because you will not be yeah. allowed to work with the public yeah. anymore. <laughs> Ivan's a good dude, but yeah, he designed that dinosaur, and I was like, that's one of my favorite shots in the whole movie. That whole yeah. pond scene. Agreed. Yeah. 
So cool. How did, do you yeah. know how they got it? No, I don't know. We weren't there for it. it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. Like, <laughs> I was probably rehearsing the Dilophosaurus. Right. <laughs> Just, Again, uh, just try, just try making it do two steps. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the idea of the underground being the first scene after COVID because yeah. it's a, it's a closed environment. There's a lot of people just in yeah. the set because there's all the like people that are selling the animals. There's the main characters doing it. There's the actual puppets. That's a lot. It's a lot of sequence shooting. So it's like, okay, let's put the camera over in here in this section. So everyone over here. Go away. Yeah. Okay, let's shoot this sequence. Okay, let's move down. Let's shoot this sequence. So we had a holding area for the puppeteers. Sure. And everything had to be spaced out six feet. And they're all in chairs. Right. Six feet. And it's like, we had a radio system. So they'd be like, okay, we're moving on to section B. And I'd be like, okay, we need these puppeteers for these dinos come in. And they would come in. Like a NASCAR team. Yeah. And usually like a puppeteer that's doing the remote controls for the face would sort of mm -hmm. be on set and we'd have the monitors just behind camera mm -hmm. so that they could sort of have eyes on and then be looking at the monitor at the same time just to sort of reference everything but we couldn't do that oh. so we had a whole monitor section offset that we called video village for the puppeteers yeah so it'd be like so and so uh yeah you three need to go to video village puppeteers and then we need the other physical puppeteers here so i mean kudos to those guys that were doing the animatronic stuff because they were doing it you know quote unquote blind because usually when you have eyes on when you're behind the camera you can see where the camera's moving like you know if they're panning if they're moving into shot if they're gonna bring you know if they're starting the camera over to the right and they're you know moving it across and then the dino will come into frame later you can watch that and time it and go okay we're not in shot yet the camera's moving okay i'm gonna bring it alive and we're in shot and i'm gonna go down to the monitor and see what i'm doing whereas if you can't see that action physically in real life all you got to go by is the monitor so you're sort of going okay ready guys we're rolling in action and they're going okay well i'm keeping the dinosaur alive i think because i know i'm moving the controls but I'm not 100% sure what the dinosaur looks like at this point because they can't see it. So you're just sort of hoping because when the camera comes on to the dinosaur, it has to be alive. Right. If it's just sort of not moving and then <laughs> they just see there. it come on the camera and then they start moving. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a theme park ride. From a technical point of view, it's incredibly difficult. From that point, you're going, I'm moving the dinosaur and I hope when the camera comes on to it, it's not doing some weird like twisted yeah, neck seizuring. <laughs> yeah or like the eyes are like looking in the opposite direction to the head sure. you're just like trying to keep it all really minimal and then going for for action so it was you know kudos to those guys for being like complete pros because nobody had a nervous breakdown yeah. <laughs> but yeah it was just like <laughs> that was life and that's sort of been life now and now it's like it's weird to think about i don't shake anyone's hand anymore the same because it's a different world and we're not it's not over yet yeah, it's like I don't, I don't yeah. and I. It's so odd. I, I like shaking hands. I'm, I'm yeah. a hugger. I'm that guy. It's very strange. And they navigated this world, you know, Colin and Universal navigating that world and set, like writing the rule book, literally going, yeah. like, "This is how it has to be done." And everybody just going, "Okay, yeah, like, that's what we have to do in order to work." In order it to worked. like, yeah, create a movie, then let's do it. And uh, psh, well done, man, Mike. I don't know how they did it. That's that filmmaker spirit. Yeah. Get in there. <laughs> I just had to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> right. I have a child to feed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you like, when you when you go onto a Jurassic project, do they tell you what dinosaurs they want or do you pitch them dinosaurs? Oh, uh, I came in later. So John Nolan does all that. Like him and his his genius crew, they did all that. And then I was brought on, so normal, like as a puppeteer, you're brought in at the last point. But as a, you know, quote unquote, puppet coordinator, puppet captain, whatever you yes. want to name it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was brought on slightly earlier. So oh. everything had been signed off and I'm brought in just before the builds. Gotcha. That while they're building it, I can, and me and Damo were brought on and then Claire so sure. the three of us can then, while they're building it, going sort of navigate that world a bit, going, yeah, I know you want to put a rod there, but if you if you put a rod on the top of the coming with beta, 
that was a big thing, you know, and they're like going, you know, where do the rods go? Do you want us to put a rod on the top of the head or the back of the neck? And it's like, well, that it's actually better if you put it back here because, you know, we want to get this angle and that angle and it's better for cameras at this. So we're sort of brought on from that perspective that early on. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So do you get to see like what the shots are going to be or you come up with the shots and the references and pitch them and be like, here's what we think this is, would be the best way to shoot this? Well, with Dominion, so we early on we sat down and read the script mm -hmm. um and i was like okay that's pretty ambitious wow <laughs> yeah and then that's a lot yeah and then we get storyboards and so we have an idea of how they want to shoot it and going okay so they want to sort of from this angle all right that's that's looking like that and then then we would get like uh what the sets are going to be like because that's our first question uh yeah Where what do are you we go? shooting on <laughs> Yeah. yeah, what are we shooting on? <laughs> yeah, because that's gonna dictate how we're gonna build this. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, and so, and then it's sort of an uh, uh, an understanding and a knowledge of knowing that that will all change, mm. even on the day, even on the day of they course. might throw in a third camera, or they might go, actually, we can't, we can't shoot it this direction. We gotta shoot it in this direction. So there's a sort of give and take, and we always did um show and tells with Colin. Oh, cool. So we would rehearse a dyno and we would then try and get it to set uh, about a week or two weeks before we were going to shoot that sequence. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if Colin was on, obviously Colin would be shooting one day. So we would, we would talk to his uh, PAs and his assist assistants and be like, okay, after, after wrap today, have Colin come to this set and we're going to show him these dynos. Cool. And we come to set and look at the dyno in situation. Sure. Like, wicked and we get out his phone and we're like you know we were thinking this and he's like yeah but i really want to get this angle because we have you know owen over here with this action we're like oh okay that makes much more sense in our world okay great sure so then we have a, a week to revise that a week to go okay actually we got to shift these things around okay and then we sort of are under a general understanding of what the rough idea is got it knowing full well it could easily change yeah um, yeah that's sort of the process, you know, we come in for the build, we get storyboards, we have an idea during the build, we mm -hmm. rehearse it our way, then we do a show and tell with Colin, then he tells us our way is wrong, and this is the way he's <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> and then yeah. he gets what he wants. Um, That's the director. <laughs> and John Nolan, it plays a massive part in that. Any supervisor, any HOD, because you have to rely on them heavily heavily because me and Damo and Claire are so fixated on what we're doing. We're so wrapped in it. You lose perspective quite easily. So then John Nolan, he, and that's why he is who he is and where yeah. he is. That's why yeah. he's an HOD. That's why he's a creature supervisor. Cause he'll come in and look at it and go, okay. Uh, that's like 50% of what I think I you need. And you're like, oh man, that makes so much sense. And you're like, <laughs> he's like, what happens if you did this and this? And why are you standing there? You shouldn't be standing there. You're like, yep. Yeah. Fair enough. Because yeah. you get locked into something and you see something a certain way. Oh, yeah. And you have him come in and he just he just gives you like three things to think about. And you're like, yep. Or he'll come in and go, That's, yeah, it's not really good enough yet. And you're like, okay. Got it. Fair enough. Or he'll come in and go, that's amazing. Yeah, you guys blew me out of the water. Sure. Um, so they he plays a massive part in the whole process as well because he's constantly, he knows his place in the fact that he, he has to push you and make yeah. you make you go above and beyond because if you give colin 100 percent, then he'll he'll dial it down to 70 percent. so sure. we're not upstaging anyone <laughs> right yeah <laughs> have a dinosaur having doing cartwheels in the background <laughs> right <laughs> this one can fly now exactly that had to have been cool did you feel like you leveled up because it's a it's a different position and like you're learning so much over the course of this from start to finish massively yeah i think yeah. i learned i think i think the biggest like some big lessons were like this is like having confidence yeah and understanding that i you know i'm still a baby in the movie world like i've only been in the industry the film industry for like 10 11 years sure but in fairness to my own credit because i don't sometimes i i berate myself more than i do same you know yeah this. you know <laughs> you know i've worked on almost 20 feature films like you know, that's pretty good in 10 years. Yeah. You know, you do pretty good. You know, some years if we're doing like two or three projects a year. It's like, yeah, big projects for massive companies, Universal, Disney, Warner Brothers, you, uh, you know, it's pretty you know, good. So, yeah. So I think after that project, I was like, okay, you, you sort of know what you're talking about. Yeah. You can have a little bit of confidence in it. There's still a lot to learn. Of course. Uh, 
And I think the biggest things I learned, don't have an ego about it, man. Learn yeah. that like, you don't, it's okay if you don't know the answer. It's okay. Like, it's okay to look at Damo. It's okay to look at Claire. It's okay to look at John and go, ah, I don't know what he, or it's okay to look at the puppeteer that's puppeteering it going, well, the reason you're puppeteering this is because I thought you were the best person to do this, which means yeah. you know more than me on this and you're puppeteering this. So you're coming at it from a different perspective. So what do you need? What do you think? And what do you want? Okay, great. Yeah. Like I, you don't have to have all the answers. Just sit back and let people do their job. You've hired them for the right reasons. Let them try. If you try and say too much or be too much or try and act like you know too much, it becomes clouded. It becomes, it becomes annoying. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut up. Give me yeah. five minutes just to do my job, man. I'll yeah. make the dinosaur roar. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I think it was the biggest thing because I came in with a lot of energy and I was like, yeah. And I remember like I was so eager and I was like, Damo, that dinosaur, it's not doing this and this and this. And he would go, uh, look at the monitor, Derek. And I'd look at the monitor and <laughs> I go, it looks way better on the camera. He's like, yeah. He's right. like, you're, you're, you're forgetting because you're getting so wrapped up in rehearsals and like real world. He's like, all we work on is what's out, whatever is on the monitor. That's the only thing that exists in our mm -hmm. world. Yeah. It's the biggest lesson they taught me. The monitor is everything. If it's not on the monitor, it doesn't exist. Don't worry about it. Yeah. If it, that's all that matters. That's the only thing we live for is what's, what's on the monitor. Mm -hmm. And if it's not on the monitor, don't worry about it because you're wasting time and energy. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> it's a good one <laughs> yeah it's a hard one too it's really really hard yeah really hard especially because like you know you're just there and you want it to be alive all the time you're like nope sure it's back, like just his face oh yeah it's a face yeah. <laughs> why aren't his feet moving because well, we don't we don't see his feet <laughs> yeah or don't have feet <laughs> yeah because <laughs> the giga only had a neck and a head <laughs> that's so wild yeah well like obviously i can't i can't talk to you and not bring up the drive-in <laughs> what, what's going on, man? <laughs> what's happening? We, we suck. <laughs> I know. That's why I put you on the spot. Dude, we we did a last episode. Did you? Yeah. So you we wrapped it like, up and never released. We we wrapped it up and never wrapped it up. So <laughs> we were like, when we were in Jordan shooting Rise of Skywalker. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like what? Three years ago. That was another lifetime ago. <laughs> we were at Petra. We went to Petra where they filmed Indiana Jones. Uh -huh. um, and we went to Petra for a day, me and Tom and a couple other people from, from, from Rise. And I was like, oh, man, we have to do an episode. And he was like, yeah, we do. I was like, let's do the final episode at Petra. And we did. We spent a day <laughs> at Petra filming sort of like all of it. And we never released because we're late. We get... <laughs> I remember mentioning to you because Tom has this brilliant idea and I don't want to mention it on the podcast because it's a yeah, brilliant idea. I don't want anyone to steal it. I understand. He mentioned that to me like a, like seven months ago. <laughs> and we mapped out 10 episodes of this podcast that we want to do. Yeah. And who we would have on as yeah. guests in our industry doing? and what movies we were going to like do this about. And everything <laughs> mapped it out. Have another thing. Nothing. To be fair. You're pretty busy. I'll give you. I'll give you credit in that. Pretty busy. Yeah. yeah. We. I mean, in fairness, we haven't. Yeah. We as haven't. your friend, you're busy. As a fan of the drive-in, what's what's the holdup? The other thing too is, me and Tom don't drive in to work together anymore. We used right. to live. We used to live five minutes from each other right. for years, and now I moved. I moved you down did. to the coast. I I live about an hour and a half from Tom. Uh, <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Well, well, apart. We'll, get, we'll get specials then. This will be like Derek's version and Tom's version. My idea of ending the drive-in was yeah. to, because we always, we hate BMW drivers. They're yeah. the worst. <laughs> anyone who Fair. owns a BMW will cut anyone off. Yeah. Excessively speed. If you're listening to this and you're a BMW driver, you are the worst. Yeah. Turn this <laughs> off. Turn this, unsubscribe. <laughs> the worst. I've just lost you subscribers. Done. There was only Maybe three. I don't my know. wife said to me earlier tonight, and she goes, are you talking to Brian for the podcast, his podcast again? I went, yeah. She goes, why? <laughs> you, you, she's like, you've been That's on fair, it. That's fair, Libby. Like, That's fair. You've been on it so many times. She goes, who wants to listen to you that many times? <laughs> right. She's like, me. 
do you honestly think, Derek, that people are writing into Brian going, we want more Derek? <laughs> so whatever you guys are doing tonight is maybe just about you two and no one else. Yeah. Of course it is. Like, That's yeah, what it's enough. always been. Fair Nobody enough. listens to these shows. Come yeah. on. We've established so my, that. <laughs> my final episode for the drive-in, my pitch was we get it, we hire a BMW. Oh, beautiful. We come hire a BMW and go, all right, we're going to hire a BMW. We're going to rent a BMW for a yes. week and drive around in it and prove that BMW drivers can be good and oh, law-abiding. Interesting. But then, but then by the end of it, we're just a regular BMW driver cutting everyone off and speeding anyway. <laughs> I was like, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good way to end it. I love but it. But we never did it. We're useless. We have really good ideas that just right. sink. <laughs> There's still time. We'll figure it out. We will start this BMW slander campaign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh God. So now that you've you've worked your way to El Capitan, yeah. do you do you have any advice for today's puppeteers? Or people who want to get into the movie industry kind of doing that. Like, what do you look for when you're building your team? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, for people who know more than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not hard. Yeah. Figure it out. But I think, I think, yeah, I think it's like going, <laughs> what does the job need? Who right. are the people, you know, who, who can do the job? You sort of like, it's such a niche market over in the UK right now. Like, sure. There's, there, there are a lot of puppeteers here. Mm -hmm. um there are very few puppeteers that do film mm -hmm. and so you sort of know them all sure. um so you sort of i'm working on a project right now and we're in the early stages of pre-production cool and we get to audition so i was like my oh. boss said to me let's audition i was like you know what that is an amazing thing yeah and he to his credit went cast the net man cast it and i was like they what he's like anyone and everyone he's like people will surprise you and I was like, that's a really good lesson. Yeah. So, you know, I called drama schools up. I was like, give me five names. Give me five recent graduates. Yeah. Because I, I never had that opportunity. Sure. To work on a production at Pinewood Studios after graduating. Yeah. Called up an extra agency. Dude. And I said, give me 10 names. 10 names of people that you can think are good movers that you know I, I can't tell them what the project is obviously of course yeah i can you know sort of say you know we're looking for people who are movers so i was like open the door cast the net you know don't have an ego about it and don't be afraid to meet new people like oftentimes yeah. you're like oh i want to keep it my friends and i just want to do it my way and i don't want anyone else in because they're gonna poison the lake and sure <laughs> it's like yeah they might there's always the bad apple or two or people that, mm -hmm. you know, do a really good audition and you get them on set and you're like, Ooh, you're not, <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah. That's fine. That's sure. fine. And some people are of the mentality that that comes back on the person that hired them. I'm of the mentality was like, well, no, I hired them because they, they told me they were good enough and they look good enough. Then I got mm -hmm. them to set and they're a bit not. And that's yeah. fine. Sure. But that's not on me. That's on them. If they're, if they have a bad attitude, or, that's what I'm talking about. If they're like, a, have a bad attitude or something like yeah. that. But I think the big lesson is don't be afraid to like bring people on because they'll surprise you, you know? So yeah. I think with Jurassic and a couple of the other projects that I coordinated on after that, I was really like just going, okay, let's, yeah. let's try and find people that, that maybe haven't, you know, cause, cause the door opened for me. Right. You know, Brian Herring took a shot on me. Yeah, you know, he didn't have to. I had yeah. no film experience on episode seven. Yeah. I had nothing. I had, I'd never done a commercial TV show, nothing. And he went, why don't you come in? And he took a punt on me, you know, and that was 10 years ago. And, you know, you got to remember things like, you no, know, Herring took a punt on me. So why can't I take a punt on some 20 year old kid? Yeah. Who has never had a shot before. And I think that's the biggest thing is, and, and from what my boss said this time, is just cast the net, man. People will surprise you. I was like, yeah, they will. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I just wish more people thought like that or did that because like. You and me both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I wish you could work in the UK, mate. Okay, I'll get there. Yeah. Don't worry. I've been looking up illegal cargo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's also what makes a good leader. And that's why I'm not surprised. It's all about empowering your team to be their best selves. And then you mm. look better because you've got a badass team now. 
Yeah, I know where all the skeletons are buried. I've blackmailed. <laughs> I've blackmailed my way up to the top. I've stabbed so many yes. people in the back. <laughs> right? How do you think I got you on here four times, dude? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> took a page will, out of your book. I will take anyone down, and I will. I'll sleep. I will sleep peacefully at night. Right. <laughs> stab Tom in the back. That's right. I've noticed he wears really thick shirts. That's uh, that makes a lot more sense now. I've spread I get so it. many rumors about <laughs> right. that guy. I <laughs> heard he climbed up a dinosaur once. <laughs> Every, everyone I meet, like like Tom Wilton, I'm like, he's the worst. Yeah. He's the worst. The Stala Siren he, tapes are in evidence yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he throws rubbish out of his car window mm, for fun. For fun. That's it. Not even because yeah. he's done with it, just because he can. He's the worst. I hate <laughs> him. I hate Tom. That's right. <laughs> I just tell everyone. Yeah. I do podcasts. Yep. I I think I've uh I was doing something for the 501st. Uh-huh. Something like that. And we were signing off and they're like, Do you have anything like last advice on like Tom Wilton is the worst person <laughs> in the world? <laughs> you guys Two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I hate that guy. Right. <laughs> I'm going to tell him to just listen to this part. You know what it is? He's too handsome. We got to <laughs> knock him down some pegs. No, he's too charismatic. He's too yeah. good looking. You can't the trust worst. someone like that. No, you can't. You can't. Yeah. He's too talented. I don't believe it. Awful. The worst. Well, you know who's not the worst? You are. And I'm yeah. so glad. You're the first guest ever to come on four times, Derek, and you're still alive. Four times, mate. What? Survived. <laughs> You're really scraping the barrel, aren't you? You know, I I try. I try my best. Until there's a hole at the bottom, I think I could still get some more out of you. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, you did it. It's we've been talking for I don't even know how long because I haven't paid attention. But oh. you, we we're we're here four yeah. times. You were yeah. the first. Actually, you know what? Perfect little dismount here, if I do say so myself. Mm. Speaking of people taking a shot on people, you were the first puppeteer slash Star Wars guest slash person i really looked up to that said yes to come on my show all those ah uh, uh, bless buddy. you man. yeah look at that you're still around you boob you boob <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we will finally meet for the first time next year i know it's happening it's happening yeah. i can't believe it oh yeah it's gonna be very celebration strange. london i'll be there you'll be there i'll be there it's gonna be crimes committed most likely yeah, just against Tom. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start the planning now. <laughs> yeah, what a loser. <laughs> well, obviously, before I let you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find your stuff? Where can they find you online? They can't. <laughs> That's right. By definite, by design. <laughs> they literally can't. I've gone off Twitter. You, uh, have. you have. I have an Instagram account that is purely uh, just for very close friends and family. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I've logged on to my Facebook account in about four years. Uh, what, sh- what should they watch? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can I don't, find you, you know, in the credits of. They can find me in the credits of most movies. Uh, just mm-hmm. look at some. You can't. I'm a. I'm a ghost. You're worse than I am at this. <laughs> and I'm happy, but I'm happy about that, man. I respect, <laughs> I respect it. Uh, if you're listening to this, you can't find me anywhere. <laughs> right. uh, you'll Deuces, have to listen, suckers. Yeah, you'll have to listen for the fifth time. Right. I come on to the interesting podcast. Right. Um, if you want to get a hold I'm of your me, only you, outlet. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Yeah. So, but you can get, uh, you can contact Tom Wilton. I think he's yep. on Twitter. Um, yep. Tom K. Wilton, is it? Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Send all your hate mail to him. That's uh, what we do. It's like you can find Derek. You can yeah. find him at Tom K. Wilton. At Twitter. Tom K. Wilton at Twitter. And make sure that you address him as Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell him how much he sucks. <laughs> Imagine Tom's phone just starts blowing up now with a bunch of people mm. like, Derek, loved you on the latest episode. He's like, what is yeah. happening? <laughs> Yeah, can't find me anywhere, so yep. don't try. No, nope. where can they find try. you, Brian? They, I, they can. They know. I'll say it at the end. Bump. They know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm gonna fall for it? <laughs> you're the best. Thanks for coming on again, pal. No, man, you're the best. Thank you. And... <laughs>
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.